Of many millions of astronomical bodies the solar system is comprised of, only a few thousand have been pinpointed so far. With the inner part of the system investigated sufficiently well by now, its vast expanses beyond Neptune's orbit still remain to be explored. There is a great number of objects out there, but mankind is aware only of the largest ones. Today I'm going to tell you about one of them, Maki Maki, which is one of the biggest objects in the Kuiper Belt. It was Pluto that was the first astronomical body discovered beyond Neptune's orbit. It happened over 90 years ago, back in 1930. Unfortunately, the technologies of the day were not advanced enough to be able to detect dim objects at large distances. That is why it took another 47 years before another discovery of a celestial object in that area of space had been made. In 1978, Charon was discovered and the first asteroid beyond Pluto's orbit, Albion, was detected in 1992. The 1990s proved to be fruitful in terms of discovering a string of transneptunian celestial bodies, but at the beginning of the 21st century there was a positive boom in exploring remote parts of the solar system. That is when the prominent team of researchers Michael Brown, David Rabinowitz and Chadwick Trujillo pinpointed the most well-known space objects beyond Neptune's orbit. Among these, one designated 2005 FY9 can be singled out. Later on, it was to be renamed into Maki Maki. This exoplanet was first seen in images taken on the 31st of March 2005, and four months later, on the 29th of July, information about the newly discovered celestial object was made available to the general public after the official statement from the research group. When discovered, the planetoid was just slightly dimmer than Pluto. As for its location, at the time it was much higher than the ecliptic plane in the region of the constellation Coma Berenices. Thanks to archive images, Maki Maki has been thoroughly studied by now. The planetoid's eccentricity isn't big, at just 0.162. The angle between the planetoid's orbit and the ecliptic plane is 29 degrees, which is why this object, bright and large as it is, hadn't been noticed before. When exploring those parts of our system, the first researchers had focused on the ecliptic plane, as they assumed that the chances of discovering new celestial bodies there were higher. At the time, however, the planetoid was located in the upper part of its orbit, which is why the researchers couldn't see it. Maki Maki completes a full orbit around the system's center every 306 years. It is currently 52.5 astronomical units away from the Sun. The planetoid is going to reach its aphelion in the year 2033, with a distance to the Sun 52.82 astronomical units. Having receded from the parent star and reached its furthest point from it, Maki Maki will start approaching it. The planetoid is estimated to reach its perihelion in the year 2187, with the distance separating it from the Sun being 38 astronomical units at that point. On the planetoid's closest approach to the system's center, its luminosity will be almost the same as that of Pluto which will enable scientists to collect more accurate data about it. In terms of its orbit's parameters, the dwarf planet falls into the category of the so-called classical objects of the Kuiper Belt, or QB1. Unlike Plutinos, which are in orbital resonance with Neptune, QB1s lie quite far from this icy giant. That is why the gravitational influence exerted by Neptune over them is quite negligible. On the 23rd of April 2011, Maki Maki's disk was passing in front of a dim star in the constellation Coma Berenices. Thanks to this eclipse, it was possible to estimate the planetoid's size rather accurately. Its equatorial diameter measures one and a half thousand kilometers. Its polar diameter, on the other hand, turned out to be 1,430 kilometers, which is around 62% that of Pluto. 
This earns Makimaki Maki the status of the fourth largest transneptunian object, coming after Pluto, Eris and Haumea. However, it may still be beaten by Gong Gong, whose parameters still haven't been estimated with a satisfying degree of accuracy. Makimaki's exact mass still remains to be found out. The planetoid's average density is estimated at approximately 1.7 grams per cubic centimeter, which is slightly lower than that of Pluto. This information allows us to gauge the dwarf planet's mass at roughly 3 times 10 to the power of 21 kilograms. Incidentally, it is 4% that of the Moon. Makimaki's rotation period is around 22 and a half hours, which is quite a lot for a dwarf planet. It is known that the planetoid faces the Earth with its equator, although the tilt of its axis with respect to the orbital plane hasn't been estimated yet. Makimaki is admittedly a rather bright object. The average ratio of its actual brightness equals around 0.8. First spectral analyses revealed that the planetoid's surface is not homogeneous. Most of it shows a high brightness ratio reaching 90%. Still, up to 7% of the dwarf planet's surface is dotted with dark spots absorbing up to 98% of the light shed on it. These patches are thought to be areas of surface made up of rocks that are peculiar to the planetoid. Strangely enough, Later observations carried out using the Galileo National Telescope showed Makimaki's surface as rather homogeneous. The dark spots reportedly seen on it may have been errors of observation or reflections of an unknown satellite that happened to be passing over the dwarf planet's surface. That is why further observations are needed to settle the question. Observations and spectral analysis revealed that Makimaki's surface is almost as bright as that of Pluto. It consists for the most part of methane, ethane and a very small amount of nitrogen. Continuous exposure to powerful ultraviolet rays is thought to have produced tholins, complex hydrocarbon polymers containing nitrogen. It is tholins that give methane snow on the surfaces of transneptunian objects a typical reddish hue. Makimaki's surface temperature is currently estimated at around 29 Kelvin or 244 degrees Celsius below zero. When Makimaki is in its perihelion, the temperature slightly rises to around 34 Kelvin or 239 degrees Celsius below zero. As the melting point of nitrogen and methane is much higher, it is logical to assume that the planetoid must be covered with reddish snow made up of methane mixed with ethane, nitrogen and tholins. Interestingly, observations and estimates show that methane on Makimaki's surface is crystallized and appears as rather large grains around 1 cm in size. As for ethane, it looks like grains measuring around 1 mm in diameter and filling smaller crevices and holes on the planetoid. It goes without saying that in such low temperatures, Makimaki's atmosphere is bound to be extremely rarefied. The density of gases just above the planetoid's surface is approximately 1 billion times as low as that on our Earth. The eternal ice the surface is encased in cannot melt even on the planetoid's closest approach to the Sun. Besides, most of the solar energy reaching the dwarf planet rebounds back into space on account of the object's high albedo. For a long time, it was thought that Makimaki didn't have any satellites. However, in 2015, a group of American researchers did detect a celestial body orbiting the planetoid. That's when its main parameters were gauged. The object hasn't been given a name yet, and for now is officially catalogued as S-2015. Still, the satellite was informally nicknamed MK2. As usual, a quick overview of the basic parameters. To begin with, MK2 is a small and dark celestial body that reflects around 7% of all light shed on it. Its diameter may measure anything from 90 to 200 km and the radius of its orbit cannot be less than 21,000 km. As for its orbital period, it is around 12 Earth days. The inner makeup of MK2 is thought to be identical to that of Makimaki. However, 
sun rays would have vaporized the layers of methane snow that used to cover its surface. Besides, with almost no gravitation forces exerted by the satellite to speak of, the gases molecules would have floated away into space. It is admittedly an extremely slow process that takes billions of years to complete. As Makimaki's rotation period is anomalously long, it gives grounds to assume that there is at least one more large satellite orbiting it, but it still remains to be discovered. Makimaki is currently located almost at the furthest point of its orbit, which makes it difficult to investigate it. However, sending out an interplanetary space probe to explore it is hardly sensible at this point. Estimates show that it will take the spacecraft around 16 years to reach the planetoid, even taking into account a gravity boost maneuver near Jupiter. Just in 150 years, mere seconds in astronomical terms, Makimaki will be closer to us than Pluto. Even though it will take a while, sooner or later it will certainly reveal its secrets to us. Dear friends, it takes a lot of time and effort to make every video exciting and informative. Every like you give us encourages us and boosts our motivation. If you'd like to find out more about this or that object in the solar system, do let us know in the comments. Please subscribe if you still haven't done so, and you will never miss our latest updates. Let's keep in touch.